Coach, K.J. Hill in the seventh round, Joe Reed in the fifth round, a pair of talented receivers. You had to have been happy when you saw day three of the draft, two guys to add to your wide receivers room. Yeah, it was, a, it was an exciting day for, for us in the receiver room. Obviously, adding you know, that type of talent is very exciting, but also the character and the football IQ that these two possess, it really fits in with what we've already developed in that room at this point. So I think it's a wonderful fit from not just a talent standpoint, but also uh, from a character, leadership, uh, and overall just human being standpoint. They're really good people. Well, Coach, let's start with Joe Reed, a first-team All-ACC player as a return specialist and an all-purpose player. Uh, let's fire up the first play here with Joe. Sure. All right. So he's going to be on the bottom of the screen. No, he's going to run a with hitch, okay? He's getting with away from that flat defender. Now the ball is delivered quickly right by that flat defender. Now this is where Joe Reed becomes very special, in my opinion. So, again, it's a short throw. And at the receiver position, we want to take short throws and make them long gains. All right, so how does that happen? Well, he squares this next defender up. Now he's able to turn a short throw into a long play, very explosive. You can see why he was excellent in the return game. But you can see some of the explosion, and you can see some of the versatility that Joe has, especially with the ball in his hand. So, again, just from another angle. So, again, this, this ball should be basically a seven, eight-yard game, but the expectation, the receiver position, is one man can't bring you down. So, seeing Joe uh, – pull away from everybody and have a really nice explosive play on a short throw. It's also very encouraging. All right, so here he's an up top in the slot right there in an in a, in a empty set. So you can see him, nice speed cut coming out of this thing. He's controlling himself because he's into the boundary. So this is where Joe Reed, again, separates himself from the remainder of the receivers in this draft class. A lot of guys can't do what Joe's about to do here. So watch him here. Put that left foot in the ground. We treat that outside line like a cliff, okay? We don't yeah. ever voluntarily – go into the cliff, all right? So, again, we put that left foot in the ground and we try to get back to the big field. Puts that left foot in the ground, make, makes the first guy miss. Very important at this level. Now, the explosion, the burst, the acceleration, and the finish by Joe Reed, fantastic. So, watch how quick he squares up. He recognizes where that guy is, puts that left foot in the ground, and gets that ball back to the big field. The yards after the catch is what I'm sensing here, Coach, uh, with, uh, with Joe. The, the ability to, to take a, a five-yard reception and turn it into something bigger. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you, you've seen Joe do that a number of times already. If you, if you followed him and you were a, a, a fan of Virginia Cavalier football over the last four years, you saw him do it quite a bit. Here's a little bit. I'm going to take this to the, to, the, uh, to the end zone copy. Joe's in the backfield, okay? He's number two right here. You can see the H-back number 44. They're going to motion him out, okay? He's going to line up in a hip alignment. Now watch Joe's footwork here. This is counter footwork. Open, crossover lead on the counter. Eyes going the other way. Boom, he comes back inside. Good job on the ball. Quarterback, uh, Running back exchange here. Now you can see him get downhill quickly. Shoulders are, are, are north and south. He's squared up. He's pressing the line of scrimmage. And watch the acceleration through the hole here. Look at that. Courage. Just going through there, just like he's done it his whole life. You know, at the running back. So look at the finish here. And it, you know, he's finishing tough. He's getting everything he can in this run. That's versatility. That's what I'm talking about with Joe Reed. Talking to Daniel Jeremiah, he, he mentioned him being kind of like a wing back, kind of that Debo Samuel role in uh, San Francisco, the ability to, to do so many things in the backfield, Coach. Yeah, I see that. The fly sweeps, the speed sweeps, the screen game, handing him the ball. Major problem, and he's very, very tough to bring down, very physical runner, uh, intelligent player. I've had him in the, in the Zoom meetings here for the last couple of months. He's picking it up extremely well. He's a very good professional as a rookie. I mean, this guy is all in, and, and we're really excited about Joe from a, just a number of different areas right now. All right, let's go to K.J. Hill, because the all-time receptions leader at Ohio State was there in the, the seventh round. Again, Daniel Jeremiah said, if you're looking at this deep draft class, he said K.J. has probably three or four of the best hands uh, of, of sure. any receiver in this draft class. Sure, and, and coming from DJ, that's high praise. He pretty much takes over that Paris Campbell slot role that's been very, very productive over the years at Ohio State, coached by the great Brian Hartline, who I coached for three years down in Miami, so you know he's going to be coached up well. Here's KJ. He's, he's to the field here in a three-by-one. He's number two. He's in the middle right there in the slot. So you can see him right now releasing off the ball. They're bringing a slot pressure, so he's going to have free access. When you have a guy like KJ Hill with free access and the safety, it's going to be problems. But KJ doesn't just rely on his – superior athleticism watch the technique here with the quarter turn of the head right there to get the safety to think that he's running a route to the inside the safety now now starts his, his break towards the inside and now kj is square you know the, the, the safety's hips are facing inside and he's basically in trouble to anything that's on a corner or an outbreaking route so kj sets him up with a beautiful quarter turn of the head he starts to drive inside boom breaks him off to the outside 
tumbles him. This is what we talk about, tumbling a DB, where he has a baseball turn there. And now KJ's looking to track the football. Again, watch him in the slot up top. Same position he was, number two, in a uh, three-man surface. And again, he's going to widen this nickel. Watch him widen him, widen him, widen him, and then slip inside right there, widen him, boom, and get right back on your landmark. And again, he's expecting that corner to come over an overlap technique and vice tackle him with the safety. And again, watch the toughness right there. Just, just controls the football, gets what he can. All right, moves the ball inside the 10-yard line. Because he spent 95% of his time in the slot. So uh, a guy who's very familiar with that position can come in and obviously a rookie uh, not having an offseason program. There's going to be a learning curve for a lot of these guys. But, but to have a guy who did this at Ohio State for four years has to be a plus. Sure. And the way that we teach the position, you know, in our room is that guys learn the entire offense conceptually. And then we start – you know, right around training camp, we start giving him one or two, especially if you're a rookie, positions to play in, in, a, in a corresponding day. And then the next day, I might say, hey, these are the other two positions you're playing today. So they'll learn the whole offense. So everybody needs to be able to play inside and outside in our room, obviously, at this level. So it's a different nuanced game at this level. But the skills that you see from KJ and Joe are going to transfer over just fine. Last clip here. So again, you can see he's got a big box fade. So again, he motions over, he's in the slot. So he's gonna stem this nickel inside to try to bury him inside leverage because they have a pressure coming in, five man pressure. So he's gonna have inside technique. KJ very patiently works him inside, sticks outside. Now he's digging for a full three steps before he looks for the ball. Now he's tracking it, locating it, does a great job of saving space to the red line, which is five yards from the boundary. So, again, you can see a very good job by KJ understanding leverage, route craft, body language, burst, demeanor, late hands. A lot of really good technique, you know, displayed on, on one particular play that made it look very easy, but there was a lot of nuanced, uh, detailed uh, technique that he did to make it look that easy. Coach, final thing for you. How will having Mike Williams and Keenan Allen in this room be of benefit to KJ and Joe, especially with this off-season virtual program coming into training camp for the first time with, with everyone together, to have those guys in that room has got to be a benefit. Sure. So having successful and productive veteran players uh, as a rookie in front of you is, is really important. Just showing them like how to do certain things, what to expect, what the standard is, how to identify coverage, just some tips and tricks like you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm speaking for a, a, pr a predominant amount of time in, in the meetings, but I allow the, the veterans to chime in and I'll even ask my Keenan, what are you seeing on this one? He's like, oh, well, the leverage of the nickel and the rotation of safety, it's easier for me to understand how this might, might unfold by using some deductive reasoning skills. So Keenan does a really good job of explaining what to look for. You know, Mike has a, has a really good experience of being, you know, a young player who had, we had to rely on really early in his career. So he understands that maybe the pressure, what's expected of you. And obviously it's a different year, you know, not having those guys, not having the, just at least in minicamp and in OTAs, they go against veteran players that they've seen on TV and they have that I can play at this level moment when they make some real plays. And not having that, it's going to be instrumental that Keenan and Mike, you know, help build their confidence as well, you know, throughout the training camp process because we're counting on these guys. We're counting on a number of young players at a number of positions. So that's going to help, you know, the, the learning curve be shortened if you have good veteran leadership in that room like we do with Mike and Keenan. What's happening, Chargers fans? If you guys want to see some more, click right here. Check it out. It's pretty simple. Right here. Check it out.